And that's, joy is different from pleasure. You know, we all have experienced in the human condition fleeting pleasures. They're here and they're gone, they're here and they're gone, like pain. Here it's gone, here it's gone. But this inner joy that comes from the spirit is, is literally beyond the fleeting pleasures of the world. The Bible, one of the sayings of the Bible was, eat, drink, and be merry, for one day we shall die. And that's more of a very limited view <laughs> on the way things are. That's we're, a joy. Yeah, that's a, we're, so we're talking more, follow the Spirit, be inspired, and then live in eternal life as you're lifted up, you know, into that realm of celestial order. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can speak a little bit about diseases. Yeah, it, it actually runs much, much deeper than that. Um, for example, there's a line in A Course in Miracles that says, the mind was sick that thought the body could be sick. The mind was sick, notice the past tense, the mind was sick that thought the body could be sick. So the Holy Spirit doesn't have sickness in mind. In fact, that's why Jesus could seem to heal the sick and raise the dead. Because he was listening only to one voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And it really wasn't on Jesus' radar screen. Um, he, he didn't have it in his mind, and that's why those that even seemed to be around Jesus, the dead rose up, Lazarus came right out from the, the grave, the dead arose, the sick were healed, and it wasn't because he was personally healing anybody, he was simply in that Christ idea in which there is no sickness. You know, God created Christ perfect. God didn't say, I, I give you all my creative, I give you eternal nature and love and joy and peace and happiness and sickness. No, it, sickness wasn't extended from God. So when people ask me, how do you heal? I say, you have to actually go so deeply within in joining with the Spirit that you actually see the impossibility of sickness. And how do you do that? First of all, you have to get it off the screen. Like if this world's a projection, like a movie theater, um, you, you have to start to realize that the problem is not in your set. The problem is not on the screen. Cancer or a heart attack or whatever would be on the screen. And, and of course, you know, George Harrison, Ramana Maharshi, you know, fill in the blanks. There was a lot of them that seemed to have cancer, tumors, so on and so forth. But when you take it back into the mind, first of all, you have to see that, that the sickness isn't really specific. Whenever we believe the problems are specific, we, we have misperceived the problem. So cancer would be a specific form of sickness, but again, sickness isn't specific. Sickness is mental. Again, we come back to the teachings from Jesus, all illness, he says, is mental illness. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. All, you mean cancer is mental illness? Wait a minute. Mental retardation, you know, you can start to name all the things that we have classified as mental, schizophrenia, psychosis, da da da. That's what our psychiatrists and psychologists have said is mental illness. And then we've got things like cancer or Spina bifida, you know, go, you could go down the whole thing, and those are all physical ailments. I don't know, Jesus says, there's your problem right there. You believe there's physical illness and mental illness, and it's all mental. And the only way that you heal it is to see that it's all mental. Because then you're ready to take the next step called atonement, called salvation, called resurrection. So the Holy Spirit doesn't really know of the cancer. There's even a great line in the Course that said, the Holy Spirit, it says, looks not to effects, because He has judged, judged their cause as unreal. So the cause of this world, and everything of this world, is the ego. You don't think that an eternal God would actually create an ephemeral, temporal world. We don't get apples from orange trees, we don't get pears from apple trees. Spirit comes from spirit, and matter comes from nowhere. <laughs> it's, 
it, it, some of you heard of Mary Baker Eddy, because this is religious science, you know, science of mind, Christian science. Yes. There's no life, truth, substance, intelligence, and matter. There's no mind and matter, is what Mary Baker Eddy was teaching. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Teaching the same thing the Course in Miracles is teaching, that the error is not in the form, the error is in the fragmented perception. So if you're perceiving a fragmented world of specifics, that's the problem, that's the sickness, that's the mental illness that needs to be healed. And how is it healed? Through holistic perception, unified perception, the quantum field. If you like quantum physics, got it right there in quantum physics. The quantum field is the healing. And you can see that's so good to get clear on because other than that, you know, it would be like the Holy Spirit using cancer uh, is, is implying that the Holy Spirit believes in cancer. But the Holy Spirit is, thank God, is the, the healed perception in which there is no cancer. So it's, it's really deep, but it's, it's, it's how it heals. So if you... Um don't have health insurance, then you can use science of mind technique. Yeah. I mean, that's what I do. That's your health insurance. Lynn, that's your health insurance. Peace of mind. Thank you. Get a piece of the rock. His sickness is very awesome. The rock. I will build my church on the rock. Not prudential. Peace of mind. <laughs> No offense. <laughs> yeah. Are we to believe that Jesus really did raise the dead? Are those stories real or are they just parables? Well, in the ultimate sense, everything in this world's fiction. So it's it's all fiction. But but actually those things in terms of linear time, they they happen. I had one of them myself, so in this day and age. So I know <laughs> there was a bunch of them 2,000 years ago. It's all, it's all parables because it's all fiction and the Spirit using the symbols to point towards the abstract oneness. But I had one of those myself, so um, I, I wouldn't doubt at all that there was a number of them <laughs> 2,000 years ago. It's a, par it's a parable of David's story where I was, I was going to take um, a stop at a salad bar for my grandmother, who's probably was in her 70s or 80s at the time. And I always used to go to the same grocery store to go back to get the salad bar, and I was guided to go to another grocery store, a different one that I don't usually go to, and I was like, okay. And I, I was doing my uh, work course workbook lessons, and the Rolodex was kind of like, in my mind was, was there is no death, the Son of God is free. There is no death, the Son of God is free. See how it works, you know, you're working on a course workbook lesson and then the form kind of comes to really bring it home, you know, really show it to you in, in living color, three-dimensional. So I went to the, sal the store, the salad bar, and I was heading back towards the, the uh, salad bar section and I was over by the frozen foods and then I looked and I saw there was a woman that was laid out on the tile floor of the grocery store and I just observed and she you know, just lay there very still, no movement in her diaphragm, just laying there like a corpse. And actually they had paramedics there trying to, you know, to do some type of a revival with her pounding on her chest and, and doing those kind of things. So I just stopped and watched while the Rolodex was going, there is no death. The Son of God is free. There is no death. The Son of God is free from the Course. And then um, the paramedics kind of stepped back and went off to another part of the store. And interestingly enough, there was just the body, the, the corpse, just laying there. And then I kept, again, there is no death. The Son of God is free over and over and over. And then I felt all this energy up, up here in the forehead area and all this energy in my chest area. So I was kind of leaning back against the frozen food section. <laughs> and uh, um, then I watched the, the diaphragm uh, start moving again. It's like the, the breath, you know, just 
came back into the body, so to speak, and everything. It was the most natural thing with that going on. It wasn't like, <gasps> or it wasn't like, oh my God. You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't a surprising or even a shocking experience. It seemed like the most natural experience, just a reflection of where my mind was at with what was going on in my course lesson that day. So yeah, that, and then I went back and just got my grandmother's uh, <laughs> salad bar and one for me and went and paid and it was just, you know. Was she still laying there when you left? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was all, it was all for me, yeah, you know. Yeah. But, but it was beautiful, so that's why those kind of raising the dead, wow. you know, parables of Jesus type, I'm sure there was a number of them. Um, and, and I think Lazarus, the story of Lazarus, is, is again an example of there's no order of difficulty in miracles because, you know, Lazarus had, had been, you know, in the tomb for some time. I think it was like three days. And there was, a, there was kind of a, 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 a standard back then that a belief among the Jews that when the body was in the tomb or buried for three days, the soul was gone. <laughs> the soul would leave the body by at least three days. So it was almost like that was a, a very distinct popping of even that three Jewish days. belief. Yeah, the, the literally resurrection and him coming out with the, the graves, grave clothes and the smelly body. I'm sure there was a bit of rigor mortis, a bit of decay <laughs> after three days and then coming out, which was quite a dramatic raising of the dead. But then of course when you get into the Course and it tells you everything is mind, and remember sickness, we just talked about sickness is mental illness. It's perception that's where the mental illness is. It's not forms. It's not like bodies actually die or are born. They're just symbols, dream symbols. And the mind that has a fragment Perception is the mind that is in need of healing. And then holistic healing, or Armel was talking about dreamer of the dream, that's, that's really like a lucid dream. When you have a lucid dream and you're aware that you're dreaming, it's very empowering. You could even have a monster, a fire-breathing dragon in, in your lucid dream and be like, ha, 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 ha. look at those flames, wow. You know, because you're not identified as the character that's getting scorched. Uh, you know, you're the dreamer of the dream, and that's really what the Course is aiming at. It's aiming at really training our minds to, to see that we're a dreamer of the dream, which, which is coming back to true identification in mind, and away from the character. So it was a nice raising the dead parable, but it, it was all serving my mind training. You know, I remember when I was studying psychology and years ago where, you know, everyone's heard of like multiple personality oh, right. disorder. Isn't that fascinating that the different characters in the multiple personality disorder, you know, one could be diabetic and then one could have cancer and one could have heart ailment and this and this. And then as they flip, it shows it's all mental. I know. Because they go into another personality and the cancer's gone. Now it's diabetes or yeah. something else. It's just almost like tweaking and shifting different projections. And then you start to think, wow, what if all, not only the, the conditions of the body are just projections, but what if the bodies themselves are just projection and they're not real either? Like the, the, the ego peopled the world. Jesus uses peopled as a verb. Mm. <laughs> he says that, isn't that amazing? Instead of a noun, people. People, people who need people are the luckiest people. You know, he's using, <laughs> he's actually using people as a verb. The ego peopled the world. And so if you're going to take a unified mind and fragment it into little bits of awareness, each with their own little separate private mind, with their own little ambitions and futures and pasts, you see, it's, it's the matrix. Yes. It's the matrix, and the only way out is to get back to the real world.